Holmes. Welcome to the Hour of Deliverance. I'm Reverend Dr. K.E. Holmes. I want to share with you the sweetener, the atmosphere enhancer. Now listen, we are made in the image of God and we are to deal with living in this earth, but living on this earth and living in the different realms of this earth. In his image, he gave us authority and dominion. Now in Christ, he gave us the responsibility and the ability to do just this. Now we know that today, uh, science tells us that the human being only uses a very small portion of their brain. Well, I want you to know that most saints of God only use a small portion of the authority that we're given in the Lord. So today, I, I, we're, I'm going to do you the way that I did church uh, last night. I said we're going on a plane ride. You don't have to grow in the Lord to move in some realms and some dimensions. It's recommended that you grow. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you grow thereby. That's in Peter. However, there's some things that you can move in just by changing your position. Some things you can see differently just by changing your position. Now, if you've never been on a plane, those of you have, who have been on a plane, you'll know what I'm talking about or been on a uh, up in the air on anything or up high that without having gained another piece of knowledge when you get on a plane you see a thing from a different position and you know then differently than what you knew when you were on the ground if you're looking from where you're sitting looking out your window it looks different than if you're standing on the roof not because you know something different but because you are positioned differently and that's where I want to take you today whether you're a novice whether you have been saved uh, all your life or whether you just <laughs> got saved 10 years ago or yesterday we're going to move in a position where does that authority come from it comes from the word in first pardon me in the uh, first verses of Colossians 3 Jesus tells us, the word tells us that you are seated in heavenly places with Christ. So that's where I get the, the idea and the metaphor of, I'm going to put you on a plane. Actually, Jesus already told us it's way better than a plane. I use that so that it doesn't sound so foreign to you. So it doesn't sound so deep to you. So it doesn't sound so far out or metaphysical even. Um, we're, we're talking word. We're not talking witchcraft. We're talking the natural and the spiritual. And we're talking the realm that God has given us. Come on, we know that Jesus told Peter that I've, the keys of the kingdom are given to us. The, the church, uh, the, the enemy will come against the church, but the enemy will not prevail. The enemy will not prevail. And I'm not... I'm very well aware of our enemy. I'm very well, well aware of the devil. But I want us to be more aware of God, more aware of his goodness, his glory, his love, his grace, his power, than we are aware of anything else. As a matter of fact, I have in my life embarked to know God better than I know myself. Why? Because what he says is right. What I say can be right up to as much as I know. But God is all-knowing. He's... he's uh, not only omniscient, but he's all knowing. I can only be here and not there at the same time unless it's by technology. God just being himself. I wish I could do that just being myself, but God is. So we want to know God better than we know ourselves. And you want to know God better than you know your name. And then he might change your name. He did it for Jacob. He took him from being a trickster to being a father of nations. Ah, God, you want to know him better than you know yourself. That's why he tells us as new creatures, he says, Behold, look at that, study this. You're a new creature. All things have become new. Stop remembering that old stuff. Yes, you need to acknowledge and recognize what you were and where you were, but you want to know God better. You want to know the exceeding great and precious promises better. Then you know yourself. Why? Because it's through them, it tells us in Second Peter chapter 1, that you've escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. That's whether it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life. It's through his exceeding great and precious promises that we escape. So, 
buckle your, you know, how do you get on a plane? You walk up there, and whether it's a baby in the Lord, or a, a, I'm talking about a, a, a baby person, or a, an older person, or somebody middle, and I'm making that similar to wherever you are in the Lord, you can get on the plane. You can be seated in heavenly places. And as a matter of fact, let me say what the criterion is. I have a, I, I usually have a, two things with me here so that I don't have to take the time to switch between. But in Colossians, let's see, it's Colossians 1, pardon me, Colossians 3, verse 1. He says, if you're risen with Christ, if you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're risen with him. The life that you live, not only do you live it by the faith of the Son of God, but you live it through the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You live through resurrection power. And that's why you're able to do and be all that God has given you to do and be. That's why you want to know God better than you know yourself. So if ye be risen with Christ, this is Colossians 3.1, seek those things which are above, uh, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Now do you understand you're already on the plane you've already lifted off? You are already seated in heavenly places. This isn't even the plane. This is, you are seated at the right hand of God. You've already gotten the destination. And so he tells us, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. You're going to live on the earth. You're going to walk on the earth. But your affections, they need to be somewhere else. And that's how you walk in victory. So, uh, let me get back to where I was. I want to share with you today the sweetener, the atmosphere enhancer. Now, it mostly comes from Ephesians and Colossians, certain scriptures. It's all about keeping your heart right. But I want to take, take you into that, not walking the earth but seated in heavenly places from a different realm and from a different perspective, from a different dimension and a different arena, arena so that we can do this thing and have the effects and see the effects. Remember, if you're positioned here on the ground, looking at, out of your window, you can see what's across the street for however your vision is. But when you're on the roof looking, you see differently and you have, you can make some different kinds of decisions. Well, not only that, but, but, moving in the power of God that he's given us in having saved us you can actually move in different power if you're in a, a room uh, with electricity and you turn on the lights it lights the whole room but how far that light goes is according to the size of the room it's according to the the arena and the dimensions of the place so the love of God it takes us into different arenas different realms different dimensions and I want you to be able to see this and I, I want to show you the earthly ground but why you want to move there in a in the heavenly plane one reason why is because this is about love now, if you're going to have faith, first of all, any faith that you have is God's faith. He gave it to you. He works it in you. He works it through you. He's put that treasure in you, but it's his. So faith gets things done. Faith without works is dead. So faith does some things, but faith is some things. And faith affects, that's A, affect with an A. Faith affects some things, but it also affects some things. In other words, faith has some power. So it not only has a result so that it gives you what Jesus called fruit that remains. Not just a result, some kind of result, but fruit that remains, but it also has power. So with the sweetener, I want you to know that you can more than want to change your attitude, somebody else's attitude. You can more than change your inner sphere and your the outer sphere and the atmosphere. Got that? So we're going to look at the sweetener. But I first want to remind you that the word of God says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Now understand where we walk on the earth. God made us, made Adam, put him on the earth, made him out of the dust of the earth. He took from his side Eve. So she's uh, made of him. And then he, the reason why I'm telling you this is because you are made 
of earth. And so the, the inclination is only to be concerned with things that where your feet are on the ground. But we're made in the image of God. So soul and spirit moves in the spheres that God made that are under the sun. So watch this. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now your heart is kept by wisdom. Your heart is kept by the word. Your heart is kept by the spirit of the living God. Your heart is kept by the Holy Spirit. That's not walking on the ground. And I actually don't want to say not because, yes, God can walk on the ground. Yes, the Holy Spirit can walk on the ground. We, we know from, from the scriptures that in the, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Didn't say on the ground, but I just want to be careful to not to say something is not just because of what else is. We're moving in a higher plane and not just because of growth. Yes, you want to grow, but I want to talk about positionally today. You can position yourself and change things on a dime. You can change them right now. As a matter of fact, you can change them yesterday by how you position yourself with the sweetener and the atmosphere enhancer. Call somebody, email somebody, text somebody, tell them to tune in. Yeah. 
All right, here we are. The sweetener, the atmosphere enhancer. Now remember, I told you to buckle your seatbelt. We are going light. I'm liking it to a plane when you go up in the plane. You don't have to have studied aeronautics. You don't have to have studied anything. You just sit in your seat and go. Jesus, the word of God tells us in Colossians that you are seated in heavenly places. If you're risen with Christ, you're seated in heavenly places. We're going to attack this, and I mean attack. We're going to attack this with uh, the word of God from the heavenly places. So remember, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The issues of life have more to do with what you walk on with the soles of your feet. Now that's important. Blessed are the feet of them who bring good news, who bring the gospel. That's the word. There's much the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. We're not negating the things God says about walking in the earth. You are the light of the world. Things are important in the earth. What I'm telling you is right now we're going on the plane ride. Right now we're going to seat it in heavenly places and we're going to sweeten the atmosphere, the inosphere, the hemisphere with the word of God in our hearts. So this, there's a story behind it. I, if I can tell it short, I'll, I'll try to tell it. If I find I'm taking too long, I'll just stop in mid-syllable. But uh, from, the first, from when the Lord first saved me back in 1968, I understood that it was important to keep our heart right uh, just because I dealt with so many things. I had a bad situation at home. Um, God had changed me, but you know, when God saved you, it did, he doesn't necessarily save everybody around you. Now for some, that is how it happens, but that wasn't how it happened for me. And uh, <laughs> then there was a situation at school. I didn't realize, but it was a situation that I had created. Um, and there were other challenges just because it was the 60s, because of the times that were. And I understood that it was important for my heart. God helped me to understand it was important that my heart... I hadn't even gotten to Proverbs yet. I started in Genesis, uh, reading the Bible because it was a book. But God taught me that I needed to keep my heart right in order to walk right in Him. That I loved him wasn't enough. You know that. You look at the children of Israel. They love the Lord. They're called of the Lord. They're empowered of the Lord. But every time they go away from his word, they go away from his love. So we want to walk this thing out in the word, not by intentions, not by your good intentions. Please understand that. You can be very sincere and be sincerely wrong. You can have good intentions and not even be about what God has called you to be about. You know that he's called you. You know that he's saved you. You know that he's ordained you. And yet, you can move in things that have nothing to do with him because it takes the word. You need to, you need to grow by the sincere milk of the word, not the sincere desire of yourself. And yes, you need sincere desire. But it's not your sincere desire that makes anything correct. So, uh, God began to give me the scriptures. Now I'm going to give you the key scriptures. Uh, and one says, this is Colossians uh, 3.12 and 3.14. One says, pardon me, that you will keep your heart. Uh, he says, actually I'm going to skip there. I'm, I want to just go to the importance of keeping your heart. So it's you must speak the word. You must say the word. It's not just to read the word. God tells you to speak the word. He tells you to say. Speaking and saying have a slight difference to them. God wants us to do both. He wants us to read the word. You need to see with your eyes. And if you're blind, there's still a seeing that has to do with your soul. And that's that's what this seeing with your eyes, it actually registers in your soul. So God wants us to be able to read his word. Do you realize that there were several hundred years where God's word uh, was not known? Just just like in the, um, after Malachi, at the end of uh, uh, the, the Old Testament. I don't like to say it that way because the Jewish canon ends with Second Chronicles, not Malachi. But from the point of Malachi on, there was a void of prophecy and a void of prophets and a void of the word of God. Well, as non-Jews, the world experienced that thing for several hundred years and the people did not have the word. Now how can that be when God is the one who gave the word? It was important enough to him for him to have written the Ten Commandments on stone. 
in stone. It was there had been much oral tradition so that the people understood the oracles of God, so that the people understood the word of God. The people understood the heart and the intention and the purpose of God. We understand now that it's he that works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. Well, he had given this to the Jews. But when Moses came along and God ordained that Moses would come along, he wrote it in stone. Please understand, it is important enough to God to give us his word written that also presupposes or causes us to be able to pre-understand that God means for his people to be able to read. You see, that a certain segment of society doesn't get to read is a travesty, but it's a travesty on a whole other level. I'm talking about this other plane that we don't even get to recognize. Yes, it's a travesty on an educational and on a social level, but it makes it so that you can't know the word of God like you need to know it. You cannot fulfill some things God said to do. He said to read his word. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to be without his word because you can hear his word. Somebody can tell you his word. Somebody can read it to you. But do you understand if you can't read and God says read, then you can't read. And so it puts us all automatically. I'm talking about being on this higher plane. It makes it so that we cannot even obey what God has given. Then if you have all the people uh, in a region or in an area or all of a culture that cannot read, then that whole culture cannot obey God in a thing. And God already told us obedience is better than sacrifice. You can do a whole lot of things to make up for where you're missing. But it's the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God does not want us lacking. And and so understand, just, just from the standpoint, God puts his word on, on in stone. That says many other things than what I'm sharing with you today. But I want you to understand from another plane, from another plane, not only is it important to be able to read, but I want you to also to understand that we had several hundred years in our modern times, modern man, where there was not word. People commonly did not have know how to read. People were illiterate. People couldn't read and write. And that isn't that long ago. So in that time, you go away from the word and you, we don't know that we've gone away from the word. Now we can look at Israel and we can see that ancient Israel, where every time they walked, they did not keep the word. They ended up in all kinds of trouble with, with their neighbors and with the people all around the world and with themselves and with God. So I want you to understand that you have to keep your heart right. But how do you keep the atmosphere? How do you keep it? Uh, I want to look at uh, if we be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. That's what you want to seek after. Yes, it's going to cause you to make some right decisions in politics. It's going to cause you to make some right decisions in education. But seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections up there. Why? Because you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now that means a lot. So that when the enemy comes after you, he can't find you. He comes up against Christ, who already made an open show of him and triumphed over him. Now, triumph means he beat the snot out of him, <laughs> to use a modern expression. He beat the snot out of him. That's not just he just made it. Not just, you know, we were neck and neck and just made it across. No, no, no. And so, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. So you want to be able to sweeten the atmosphere. And you're going to rule it. He let us know in the scripture in Ephesians that we're going to rule the atmosphere. So sweeten it up as much as you can. Fill it with God's word as much as, as you can. And in every way that you know how. In every way, realm, dimension that you learn. So put on, the first thing is put on as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Don't just put on as just any old body. Don't just put on as somebody who talks ugly about yourself. You know what I'm talking about. I'm nobody. I'm not this and I'm not. No, no, no. Put on as the elect of God. That's like Joseph, that coat of many colors. Put it on as the elect of God. Holy. Not just any other kind of way. Not just uh, uh, scuffed up and messed up and slapped up and coming apart and needing hemmed up and all that. No, no. Holy. And then beloved. You need to understand that you're loved. 
you're loved and you are the be loved that has to see that that causes that love to go into your being <laughs> and um and then he says bowels of mercy that's that mercy that comes out of your liver that mercy that comes out of your insides kindness humbleness of mind uh meekness and long suffering so these are the ways that these things on the inside and you put these things on this coat of many colors and it 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 begins to infuse into you because you're putting it on as the elect of god and as the holy and be loved this takes part of your being you're transformed but it causes you to transform everywhere you walk don't you we already know this if somebody comes in with their clothes are torn even when it's the style I didn't understand it's the style to have your uh, holes in your jeans and and probably other places too and have tags showing even if it's the style if you walk in one that way and somebody walks in with a suit there is a different reception and I'm not talking about whether or not it's a reception you want or don't want I'm saying that how you are clothed makes a difference on the effect that you have around you so god has told us that you affect the atmosphere just by putting on now as the elect of god don't put it on as somebody who's looking down at your feet it's, don't put it on as gideon when he was hiding out put it on as gideon when he said for for gideon and the sword of the lord the sword of gideon and the sword of the lord after god had let him know that you're a mighty man of valor put it on as the elect of god um, <coughs> pardon me and as holy not just living sloppy and when I t say that I'm not just talking about you don't drink, you don't smoke, you dip, don't dip, you don't chew uh, and you don't associate with those who do that's an old expression but I'm talking about holiness is how you treat one another Jesus said it's, you do to the least of these my brother and you've done it to me that's in the first commandments love the, God, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul and strength love your neighbor as yourself God created your neighbor just like he created you you know that if you made something if you're a cook and you made a cake you want somebody to treat it well you don't want them to just slam it down and it can fall you don't want someone just to put their hands in and grab some and eat you want to cut it and slice it nicely why because you made it well God wants you to treat your brother right why because he made him if you love God you respect what he made if you love God you treasure what he made you know that for those of you that have children, and they might not even how to draw right yet and how to do a pencil right yet, but you put their picture up on your refrigerator. Why? Because they made it. That's what God's talking about when he says, love your neighbor as yourself. So understand, when you put on as the elect of God, you change the atmosphere with just what you are clothed with and how you are clothed. Understand that there is a difference the way you're treated just by how you are clothed and so we understand that so that's just one step that's one of many but powerful powerful in changing the atmosphere sweetening up the atmosphere causing righteousness to enter into the atmosphere causing kindness you see because you're putting on the bowels of mercy and the kindness and this is all of what you're putting on as the elect of God you cause that to come into the atmosphere ah Lord God the sweetener the atmosphere enhancer we are powerful in the Lord let's walk this thing
All right, we're looking at the Atmosphere Enhancer. And uh, I want to give you the eight steps that you need to do with these so that you keep them. I'm going to remind you again, but I want you to know that you commit them to yourself out loud. You want to say the word out loud. Why out loud? Um, because God tells you to say some things. Jesus lets you know if you say to the mountain, not just think to the mountain, if you say some things, we know that life and death is in the power of our tongue. So you want to verbalize, you want to say out loud the scriptures. You want to read um, out loud. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you want to take these scriptures, not just memorize them. Yes, you want to memorize them. But even after you've had them memorized, you want to read because God says read. And you want to uh, say it out loud because God says say. And you want to be able to hear it. So whether you're putting it on, um, saying it in your hearing, or putting it on on a, a mp3 or something you still want to be able to hear why because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so if you have the word playing or if you're saying you you've got that going on you want it to commit it to god kind of like we do um marriage vows because we know that that's serious or or um when you swear before the courts uh i you put your hand on the Bible and you swear, but you want to commit to God uh, in that way that you are making a vow to God that you're going to do this. I will put on, um, as the elect of God, I will put on bowels of mercy. I will put on those things that are, are in that Colossians that we were looking at. You want to vow to one another. If you're talking husband and wife, you're talking business partner, brother, sister, 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 brother, brother, friend. You want to commit to one another the, the verses that you're talking about. God, by the way, there are three that bear witness in heaven. There's three that bear witness in earth. Uh, we taught that another time, but that's over in your Bible so that there's witnesses to what you're vowing. God's holding you to it. But you want to vow it to one another. You want to be able to receive the vow from the other person. And you want to be able to give the vow just like in a marriage. Now we're not talking about getting married. Although that's important for marriage too. And you want to. I want to interrupt myself to say this. Remember it's the word of God. It's not about how much you love each other. It's of how much you walk the word of God. And if you walked it for 20 years. But twenty year 21. You stop walking the word. It all starts falling apart. Now maybe it'll take longer. Because you were walking it for 21 years. But you've got to keep the word alive. Because God's word is. He said it's alive. It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two edged sword. You see. So God's word is alive. You need to keep it alive in your soul, in your mind, in your heart, in your marriage, in your relationship, in your business. Okay, so. And then you want to give thanks. Now, some of you, if you've heard me uh, before, you've heard me say that most of the time in the scripture when it's talking about thanks, for the Western mind, it's more a matter of grateful than it is of thanks. Thanks is a nod and a yes and a, a mental consent. That is part of thanks. Uh, and that's the part that we understand in the Western world. But in the word of God, it's thanks is also gratitude. Gratitude is a life-giving power. Gratitude takes you and lifts you. You think about the things that you're grateful for. It causes something to happen and stir in your heart. You think about the things that you're grateful about. It can cause a smile to come to your face. And we already know that a merry heart does good like a medicine. You think about the things that are you are grateful for. You'll find that it moves you in places of life. Places that, that have to do with soul and spirit that you live. So gratitude more than thanks Gratitude and thanks are, are one in the scripture. Uh, culturally, we separate them out in the Western world. And that's why I like to make sure that I help us to understand that the thing that you're grateful for, that moves your heart. The thing that you're grateful for, it'll change the expression on your face. The thing that you're grateful for, it'll cause you to rock or move or what, you know, it causes a life to rise up. But it also calls life into you so that, so that life is God, love is God. So that life then brings it into line with you or brings you into line with the things of life. That's what gratitude does. That's why it's important not to separate out gratitude from thanks. 
thanks is a mental consent. Yes, we God gave us a mind, and we need to con, we need to say yes. We need to say thank you. We need to be polite and all that. But gratitude has life. Okay, so you want to give praise for a thing. That is, you want to. That this is a little. Pardon me, a little bit different than giving God thanks. God, I bless you and I thank you for this. God, uh, you are so wonderful that you have done this. You are so wonderful that you're in this. God, I bless you. I bless you. Okay, that's different. Okay, the praise. And then the worship. You want to worship. Ah, oh, Lord God, you are so wonderful. You're marvelous in who you are and having done this. And you want to say these verses out loud. So... Uh, I want to run through the eight. So you want to read, you want to read out loud, you want to commit to God, and you want to commit it to yourself. I will put on the bowels of mercy as the elect of God. So you have to commit to yourself. You want to vow it to another, you want to receive the vow from another. You want to give thanks, and remember that's with gratitude. You want to give praise, you want to worship. So those are the eight areas that you want to uh, the ways, the things that you want to do to change, to sweeten the atmosphere and to change, to enhance the atmosphere. So then, we already looked at if you be risen with Christ. Uh, by the way, I like to do this in Amplified Bible. You can do it in whatever version that you prefer. But some, all versions are not equal. I think you know that. If you don't, you know it now. Uh, but to do this, I like to do it in the Amplified because the Amplified, without making it uh, any particular today's version or teenage version or old people's version, the Amplified just gives uh, synonyms for the words that are actually used. So it says, it's, that makes it a little, um, a little more work to use. But we're a workman that needs not to be made ashamed, yes? You know, Second Peter, huh? I mean, pardon me, Second Timothy 2.15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman. So we don't mind working. So not over the word we don't. And Jesus said, you know, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So if you're then risen with Christ to a new life, this is amplified, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at, seek the rich eternal treasures that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand. Um, of God. Now, when you're in your government center, I've been dealing with the government center in the city a lot lately, so that's on my mind. When you're dealing in the government center, you need to know that you're seated in heavenly places to deal with these earthly plain things, and you'll handle them differently if you handle them from the place seated with Christ. If your affections are about things that are broader, if you'll be able to see broader. Remember I said, if you're looking out your window sitting in your living room, that's a whole different thing if you're sitting in your bedroom than if you stand up on the roof. You can see. So that if you are in the seat of government and you're looking from heavenly places, you can see further. You can see into generations. You can see into what I call the DNA of the city and not just of the thing at hand. You can see if you're making a decision that you're going to have to go around and turn it around later because it doesn't line up with the state or it doesn't line up with the government or it's not where we want to go as a people. Or it is where we want to go as a people. Everything's not a knot. Some things we need to do. But then if you're, if you're seated in heavenly places, you can see, see clearly how to do, what to do. And you can see clearly what affects what. When you're driving down the highway, sometimes you see a billboard. I like to use this example a lot. Sometimes you see a billboard, but then, and it'll be this big, but then you'll come across another billboard, and it'll be this big, and it completely hides this billboard. This billboard is there, but this one's come, it's now hidden. It's not that it's not there. It's that this is bigger. This gets more attention. This overshadows this. So, just positionally, you can see that, this decision will be overshadowed. So do we need to put it where, okay, we need to do this, but it doesn't need to take over. Or we do this, and it needs to take over. So you, you want to be able to do those things. So remember now, uh, you want to read it out loud. You want to commit it to God. You want to commit it to yourself. You want to be able to commit it to someone else, and you also want to be able to receive it from someone else. It's five things. You... um. 
you want to give thanks, you want to give praise, and you want to worship with the scriptures that change, cause you to change the atmosphere, the inner sphere, the hemisphere, and to enhance all three. So, all this, all this, because you're risen with Christ, because you're seated with him in heavenly places, you see that all has to do with that resurrection life. That all has to do with your being in position. Yes, you grow. You're going to grow. Because you love the Lord, you're going to keep on growing. But right now, we're just talking about position. Get on that plane and fly. Ah, yes. So, <laughs> we're going to break here and then we're going to finish up when we come back. sweeten the atmosphere that's your inner sphere yourself your heart but also those around you and we showed you uh, just putting on as the elect of God we showed you just like the coat of many colors because as the elect of God you are special you are the elect of God you're not putting it on as as the person who's down on yourself or who somebody's down on you you're putting it on as the elect of God just as um, Joseph with his coat of many colors it causes people to treat you differently how you your attire so your spiritual attire changes the atmosphere but it also changes how you feel years ago God gave me um the design of the wraps that that I wear and he gave them to me first but then he showed me to to uh, make them available to women and men as uh, actually uh, that the rap, it causes people to stand up straighter, causes them to feel important, causes them to feel better about themselves. Because sometimes we're so busy um, that we become weary in our well-doing. And we need to remember that after you have need of patience, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. You want to be able to continue. And God let me know that, yeah, sometimes you need to put on some things to lift you up. Uh, you can worship, but then some of us will go down in our worship and into the realm where we're down. And I'm not talking about being down and, and being depressed, but where we're explaining the thing to God so that we're not holding it in, and and it's not being needed into our soul, uh, the bad situation, but where we're giving it over to God. And that's a down place. Uh, the scripture says that if I made my bed in hell, he's there. He's not talking about eternal hell. Um but he lets you know that that if I've done terrible, God is with me. 
God was with David when he was uh, went to the ran away from Jerusalem and went to the Philistines. God was with him. Now it was rough. He had to watch his back every day. He had to um, teach his children some things you can say, some things you can't. He everywhere he went, he had to kill everybody, everything, and couldn't leave uh, any kind of evidence of anything when he fought a battle when he was living in Philistine when he was among the Philistines because they'd kill him. So God was with him. So sometimes we are down in a situation and most of us, if you don't know it already, I'll just give you notice or maybe you've been so busy going through you haven't had a chance to think about it. But most of our crisis is not over as soon as we'd like it. Most crises take a while. Most trials take a while. And what did God say about it? He said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That's a whole lot of trials, one on top of the other. This one hasn't finished and something else is happening. That's not new. Time and chance happens to all men, the scripture says. So we want to walk this thing. And we don't want to be so encumbered with one thing happening after another. I know that when it's me, it's different than when it's you. We all understand that. But God understands it in the word and he's already given us that you count it all joy. Because the trying of your faith works patience and then he goes on to say that it brings you to a place of hope and hope makes not a shame God's not going to leave you ashamed look at the faith chapter he commended everybody in there but when you look at the story of how it happened they had to go through it's no fun having having your people turn on you so uh the people who are supposed to work with you the elected officials with you I'm talking about Daniel and and uh then they try to find something on you every time you turn around they're trying to find trip you up you ever been around people that are always trying to trip up what you're saying? Or have you ever watched a person do that to another person? Trying to catch something in what they're saying. They did that to Jesus when he walked the earth. But they did it to Daniel. And then they said, well, we can't find any fault in him. He didn't do anything wrong. We can't find any legal matter. We can't find any federal matter. So we're going to have to find it about him and his God. And that's, <laughs> I love it. That's when Daniel opened the windows wide and prayed. Prayed out loud when they made it a law that you can't. We're coming up on, on um, uh, Purim and we need to understand that we need to be like Esther and we need to fast. She called for a fast because she understood her beauty wasn't enough. It got her in position. See, we're talking about getting in position, but after you're in position, that's not going to be all. And you're going to have to know all of these things already and also know what to do there. But that's why you want the position so that you can see and already know. You can see ahead. And she knew it wasn't my beauty all by myself. I need you to fast. I need everybody to fast with me. And if I perish, I perish, but I'm going to see the king. Now she already knew Vashti was taken out of the very position that she got. Some of you, you need to understand that if you put on as the elect of God, as the elect of God, put on the bowels of mercy, you will be able to change the atmosphere, you will be able to sweeten up something that's really nasty. Look at Esther. Haman had wanted to kill her whole people. That's not just sweetening. You change the whole atmosphere. You change the whole, uh, you enhance everything. Not just for you, but for everybody else. That's why you want to sweeten the inner sphere, what's going on with you. The atmosphere, what is and what's accepted. Everything shouldn't be accepted. Just because everybody's not saved. We can be a godly nation without every single person in the nation being saved. We want every person in the nation to be saved. Yes, we do. But understand that we can be a godly nation because God is in the atmosphere. If he's not in the inner sphere of every single person, you know what? You have a better chance of getting people saved when their mind is in that direction. Than when they're running. Now, neither one is hard for God. It's it's those of us who bring the gospel that have a harder or easier time, if you will. And I bless God moving in His glory. I found out it's a it's an easy time all the time. But remember that you want to do those eight things. And the Scripture tells us in six. It's on this account. Pardon me. I'm not verse six. He tells us, don't lie to one another. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to God, but don't lie to one another. 
For you have stripped off the old, the unregenerate self and its evil practices and have clothed yourselves with the new spiritual self. Remember, if you cl your clo what you are clothed with changes the atmosphere. It doesn't just change you. You're changed. You're washed by the washing of the water of the word. You're cleansed by his blood. But you've clothed yourselves. This is uh, Colossians. This is verse 10. You've clothed yourselves with the new, the spiritual self, where is, which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller, more perfect knowledge upon whom knowledge of the image of the likeness of him. Now, I've told you, I'm reading Amplified. Amplified's letting you know that the image of God is what's on you. You have clothed yourself in him so that when anything looks, it sees God. It doesn't see you, it sees God. And remember that Peter scripture, that first, second Peter chapter one, that through the knowledge of him, through the exceeding great and precious promises, you escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. You know, you, you are partakers of the divine nature through the knowledge of him. So remember, your position matters. It's not the only thing. You need to know something. So you fill yourself with the knowledge of God, but you change the atmosphere with the word. And remember, I told you those eight things that you do. You read it aloud. You commit it to God. You commit it to yourself. When I say commit, I'm talking about you make a promise to you, God. You make a promise to yourself. And I don't mean just a promise like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm talking about the way you do marriage vows. And you vow it to one another. You find someone else who means it too. And then you're able to receive it. You see, the heart that only beats in one direction is stopped. Your heart has to beat. You need that heart beat going for life. So you need to be able to give the vow, but you need to be able to receive the vow of the things in the word. And then you give thanks. And then you give praise. And you worship with these scriptures that you are saying out loud that are going to change you, the inner sphere, the atmosphere, the hemisphere that are going to enhance. So remember with clothing, it changes the treatment. It changes the perception. It changes the atmosphere that you clothe yourselves as the elect of God with bowels of mercy, with kindness. That's in the first part. I was reading to you uh, verse 10. Uh, I missed it again. It says that you've clothed yourselves with the new spiritual self, which is ever being in the, in the process of being renewed and remolded. Ah, but you've clothed yourself with this new man, the scripture calls it, which is in the image and the likeness of him who created it. He created all of that and you just step into it. You clothe yourself with it. Your clothing changes the atmosphere. Your clothing changes the treatment that you receive. Your clothing changes how you are per perceived and how things are perceived. Oh, we're not just in the gutter. Oh, we're, we're in the king's palace. So in this new creation of all distinction, Pardon me. In this new creation, all distinction vanish vanishes, and there is no room anymore for Jew nor Greek. I'm not, you know, um, I'm going to be treated better because I'm this, or because or because I'm Jewish, or because I'm Greek. No, he says, or because I'm circumcised, or I'm uncircumcised. But understand, you clothe yourself with the image of Him. Clothe yourself with the image of Him who created this new man changes the atmosphere we know that in the natural we know that if you come we're going to land now you come down and you're walking in the plane you know that if you walk clo with clothing of one type you're treated different ways walking on the earth if you walk clothed in another way you're treated differently you change the atmosphere with your clothing clothe yourself with the image of God. Clothe yourself as the elect of God. That's who you are. That's who he made you. And watch the atmosphere change. 
watch the hemisphere change into the image of him who created it. Amen blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God. God has blessed the work of your hands and you walk in favor with God and man. You think from the word and you make wise moves. You are blessed and excel in all that you do. You always attract people of wisdom and an excellent spirit and you engage in transactions and situations of vast, excellent and lasting merit. You are occupied with people and endeavors on a plane of timely, immediate, high and positive return in the internal the external and the eternal realm in the temporal the celestial the natural the spiritual in the personal interpersonal community national and global you move in all that pertains to life and godliness according to the promises of God in all of their fullness you are continuously and profoundly supplied in time resources wisdom and health in favor and finance and all manner of wealth in revelation and vision of things present and things to come in the knowledge and understanding and zeal of the Holy One. You are called to His glory, His virtue, and His praise. You are elected to His power, His loving kindness, and His grace. You are clothed with humility, and you are prudent in matters. You are blessed and anointed, highly favored and appointed, and you are full of the Word of God and its demonstration. God has appointed your going out and your coming in. He has ordained that your very life exemplify Him. Righteousness, justice, and holiness unto the Lord is the mark of your call. And the resurrection power and the glory of God, you will fulfill all. You are blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God.